Well, welcome everyone um, to our the Florida Data Science for Social Good Big Reveal event. This is the fourth year that we've done this Big Re Reveal event. Um, however, this is the first year that we've done it in uh, virtually. So it's good to see everyone. Uh, welcome to all of our presenters, panelists, and, and special guests that are joining us on the Zoom call. And we also want to welcome our DSSG friends and uh, partners uh, who are also joining us uh, on YouTube Live and also all of our participants joining through YouTube Live. So uh, my name is Dan Richard. I'm the director of our Center for Community-Based Learning at the University of North Florida and also an associate professor in psychology. And uh, I'm teaming up with Dr. Mapathy. And my name is Dr. Karthikin Mapathy. I'm associate professor in School of Computing and co-director for the Spoiler Data Science for Social Good program. In order for successful, successfully organizing uh, this program and keep on going for four years, we do need uh, uh, good advice and support. And for that, uh, we reach out to our advisory board members. So they are not only uh, advise us in our programmatic activities, they also find resources that we need to be successful in running this program. So our board members are Ari from Jacksonville Jaguar, Robert from NLP Logic, Logic and uh, Candace from Carly. So we thank them for being with us for all the past four years and supporting our program. So as uh, Dr. Richard mentioned, uh, we've been working with uh, uh, for four years and we've been supporting wide varieties of nonprofit in the past four years. And most of the projects, or almost all of the projects that we have taken on, we have been successfully been able to complete it. And the key reason behind that success is the on-time support and the best practices tips and other tips we receive from our industry mentors, whom we call as SERPAs. For this year, we received considerable amount of technical support uh, from Katie uh, in NLP Logic, Daniel from Make Labs, David from LiftChacks, James from JEA, Jay from TA Bank, Victor from the Jaguars, Robert from Blue Chip, James from Black Knight, and Nora from JEA. Apart from the technical tips we need, we also need subject matter expertise. For that, we collaborate with the academic faculties in UNF and UNF College. So this year, we received considerable amount of support from Besa and Michelle from Mathematics and Statistics, Georgiette from Political Science Public Administration, Oachmi from Management, Ayan from Fagler College, Zudong from Computing, Angela and Jody from Psychology, Amanda from Higher Education, and Gaurav from Anthropology and Sandeep from Computing. So these mentors and faculty leads met with us on a bi-weekly basis over this past three months. And uh, they are basis as being one of the key reasons where, why we are here and successfully completed our project and we have uh, interesting findings as well. So uh, we thank them, appreciate them uh, for all the support and the time, energy, and the knowledge uh, they've been imparting into us. So, but we are all in here uh, and uh, we are willing to spend the next two hours is because of this seven individuals who are our 2020 data science uh, interns. First, uh, Dana Arnold, she's a Master of Science Psychology student. She will be graduating uh, from a master's program in spring 2021. After that, she plans to pursue doctorate in clinical psychology. Next, we have Vinay, uh, who is a Master of Science Business Analytics student from University of South Florida. Uh, he will be soon graduating and he will be exploring data scientist jobs after that. Then we have Swart, who is doctorate in statistics. He just passed his candidacy uh, and he is a student at uh, UCF. He got a few more years to go for graduation from doctorate, but we are pretty confident he will be finishing it and most likely working as a scientist or a professor in a leading university. And uh, next we have Kea from University of Central Florida. She's a Bachelor of Science, Political Science student. So you'll be soon graduating and will be looking for a data science job and particularly focusing on solving social problems and with a more specific focus on environmental issues. Then next we have Chandrika Rao. So she's Master of Science, Computer Science student from UNF. She also will be soon graduating and she uh, will be looking for machine learning specialist job. Next, we have Raj Shah, who is Bachelor of Science Computer Science student from University of Florida. He did graduate in summer, and he already has a job lined up with Amazon, and he'll be starting that in, few, in a month. 
And last uh, uh, but not least, we have Alison, who already has a Master of Science in Management. He is working on a second Master's, Master of Science now in Business Analytics, which he will be soon graduating from. After that, he will be pursuing doctorate in Data Science and Big Data. So quite obviously, you can see that bright futures in ahead of these individuals. And soon, we will be hearing the project findings about for this summer's work uh, from them. But before we get to hear from them, we are a bit obligated to share a few information and also hear from some of our guests. So bear with us with that. First, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to really explain what is data science for social good. So those uh, seven interns we talked about has been working on for past 12 weeks on this problem called data science for social good. What exactly it is? This concept was developed by University of Chicago in 2013. Those individuals who were involved with forming this concept now work for CMU and this whole program they've been leading from CMU now. So this uh, BSSG uh, concept starts first with uh, as identifying a social problem and identifying a nonprofit for it. And then uh, now scoping is uh, a problem that you can work on in a short number of uh, time, like 12 weeks. And that problem we call as wicked problem. It is, a, something is called a wicked problem when the problem is reoccurring and you need multiple individuals with diverse background to work on it to come up with a solution. Once you have identified the problem, uh, the next important step you have to do is finding the data for it and then coming up with a plan to analyze those data. Then obviously you start analyzing it, cutting it, slicing it, viewing it, interpreting it. When you interpret it, you involve your client to get uh, 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 to make sure your interpretation are correct. Then you start making actionable knowledge. Once you have set up actionable knowledge, you start developing data-driven decision-making process for your client so that they will be now uh, address this issue in a sustainable way. So doing this all in 12 weeks is what uh, DSSC concept is about. As Dr. Rishlat mentioned, uh, we started doing it in Florida uh, in 2017. Now this concept has been caught up and uh, we are uh, quite happy to sh uh, share that many other universities are now have a kind of a similar kind of program. Some of them call it as uh, social good problems. Some of them call it as public good problem. So as we've been doing it for post year, we four years, we definitely know the struggle uh, and the importance of it, the level of the community impact we can make as a university. So we are also proud of all the other uh, universities who are taking part in this kind of concept. With that, I would like Dr. Richard to share with us what exactly we do in Florida Data Science Social Good. So our focus for uh, the Florida Data Science Social Good program is uh, we uh, want to help students develop their skills in terms of data science. And data science is um, an integrative learning field. Uh, it brings in multiple perspectives from different people to uh, bring solutions. So we uh, are very much interested in students developing those skills and capacities. But of course, uh, the purpose for uh, this data science is to do social good as well. And so uh, what the students are learning as they work on these social good problems, they uh, partner with nonprofit organizations, is they're learning how to be a social trustee of knowledge. And what we mean by that is uh, they are taking their skills that they've learned uh, through their education to help with um, social good issues and learning how they can contribute and also develop the expertise alongside the community partners in those different domains, in those different areas. So uh, in that sense, we are training uh, data scientists to have a uh, social conscious and that's uh, the purpose of the internship. So data science is hard. Um, the students have realized this. Um, <clears throat> they've uh, spent a large amount of time pulling different data sources together, um, trying to match these data uh, sources up, and then also being challenged by how to uh, not only do the analysis, but interpret the analysis. And so that's why we have uh, people coming from multiple perspectives, uh, but it can also be fun, uh, things that uh, we do together and uh, engage in collaborative problem solving together. Um, so it's a lot of work and we, we uh, definitely require a lot of our interns, uh, but they've done a great job. And so 
We look forward to the presentations uh, later in the session. So uh, first, before we jump into the presentations, we'd like to hear from a few of our uh, guests. Uh, in, first off is Rena Coughlin. She's the uh, director of the nonprofit uh, Center of Northeast Florida, the executive director of the nonprofit Center for Northeast Florida. And she's actually, uh, the nonprofit center is our community partners, the organization that we work with very closely um, to do this work. And so we'd like to invite her to say a few words. Thanks so much. Dan, I really appreciate it. And it's so great to be back at another big reveal. Um, I'm gonna take just a second to share my perspective on the importance and the value of Florida DSSG project. Um, the nonprofit center where I work was one of the original investors. It's actually the investor for the year one projects. And we believe so exceptionally strongly in the value um, that I think the best way to explain it is through a story. And that's about um, Yoga for Change. Yoga for Change was uh, not an ideal candidate for Florida DSSG. Their data was mostly self-reported and organized on handwritten index cards, but Karthik and Dan took a, took a chance on them. And the interns, Sherpas and other professors really did a fantastic job helping them sort of professionalize and change their data collection and took the, the raw data they had and converted it into a incredibly compelling and valid argument for investment in this small scrappy organization. Uh, the ED for the executive director for Yoga for Change then took this terrific proof of value impact work to new funders who immediately invested $50,000. So Yoga for Change could then put into place and practice research, data collection, and staff training to take their organization to a new level. That in turn generated interest and investment from a statewide funder. And this small startup now is a statewide organization. That is the power and lesson of data science for social good. And the lesson here is that with the right support, nonprofits of any size and any mission can make a better data informed case for their work. And I have to say now in this time of the pandemic, when we are expecting large revenue shortfalls, donor fatigue, and um, pretty much disruption on every single level of our business world, being able to rely on data to prove your impact has never been more important. And we at the Nonprofit Center know that there are in inequities in the power dynamics that keep some nonprofits from accessing revenue. So if more nonprofits tell their story, starting with data and impact, the playing field could be substantially leveled and more dollars would follow real success. Florida DSSG is helping nonprofits gain skills, prove their value, tell their story, and that's what I call progress. So congratulations to the amazing students who have invested so much this strange summer of virtual DSSG and made it a success. And of course, um, a huge thanks to UNF and Karthik and Dan and all of the advisory council. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Rena. Yes, we, uh, next I uh, would like to hear from Chip Klostermeyer, who's the Dean of the College of Computing, Engineering and Construction. Thanks, Dane. It's really a pleasure to talk, talk to everyone. Um, I think this data science for social good is really one of the signature UNF programs that we do. It, it's just such, um, it just embodies everything that UNF is about, all that we value, and it's just so wonderful. I really want to thank um, Kartik and Dan and all the people who work at it. I'm really proud of them. They put a lot of time and their own resources into this project. It's really a labor of love and it's just, it's just such a joy to watch. Um, congratulations to all the students. And I think it's also worth sort of realizing that this is um, such an interdisciplinary program on so many different levels. I mean, we're bringing in different um, colleges from UNF, um, data science by its nature, it's interdisciplinary, it's computing, it's mathematical, it's statistical. 
We're bringing in students from different disciplines, as, as we saw, faculty from different disciplines. It really just shows how STEM and data science and computing have permeated into everything. Um, you know, it's really sort of the gospel that I like to preach that our STEM and computing has really gotten its fingers into everything. I just find it such a wonderful representation of that. Um, so I'm really proud of them. I'm really excited for, for continuing this program. I want to continue to be a partner with, with, with Dan and, and Kartik trying to find a way to support this program. Um, and just thank you um, for everything that you do and congratulations again to everyone. Yep. Thank you, Chip. Uh, next we'll hear from uh, uh, Dean George Rainbow from College of Arts and Sciences. Thanks, uh, appreciate that, Dan. I'd like to start by asking you all to cast your mind back to 1920. Uh, to 1920 here in Jacksonville. In 1920 here in Jacksonville, there were no bridges. Think about that for a second. There were no bridges. There was no bridge over the St. Johns River. There was no bridge to the beaches. There were no bridges. Think how difficult it would have been to get around. I just took my son this last weekend over to play baseball with some friends in Middleburg and we had to cross two bridges. I didn't think anything of it, I just drove right across. Those bridges, that have been built since 1920, the first one opened in 1921, have massively improved our community. And what I like about DSSG is it's building bridges. It's building bridges between academic units, between departments. It's building bridges between colleges, Chips College and my own. It's building bridges between different academic institutions, as we see with the list of all the institutions represented for which for students are represented in this group. But not only is it building bridges between academic units, it's also building bridges between academia and the community. All the nonprofit organizations in Raina's uh, group, I, I don't know how many there are, Raina, but there are a lot, right? Uh, so all those, those organizations, we're building bridges to all those organizations. And if you look at the Sherpas, you see that we're also building bridges to industry. And just as those bridges built since 1921 have made our community better, the bridges that DSSG is building makes our community better. And I think that's why I'm so excited about DSSG. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dean Rainbow. So a message, there are 300 nonprofits that are part of the uh, Nonprofit Center. Thanks, Rena. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next, uh, we would like to move to the next set of guest speakers. So uh, resources, as I mentioned, resources, having access to resources, one of the key things for us to run the program. One of the key resources we need is the funding. So this year, uh, our program is essentially sponsored by University of North Florida Foundation through the faculty grant initiatives, then uh, FIS Computing Distinguished Professorship Award, and uh, Jacksonville Jaguar Foundation. So these are the main three uh, uh, agencies that are funding our program. But we also receive contributions from uh, University of North Florida Center for Community-Based Learning as well. So we thank uh, for these agencies supporting us and funding our 2020 program. So we would like to hear uh, from uh, 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 one of the funder, uh, Susan, from uh, uh, University of North Florida Foundation, both to share uh, reflection and thoughts. Susan? Thank you. I am delighted to be here today, and I bring you greetings from the board members of the UNF Foundation. Um, all of us are thrilled to be a um, funder, uh, one of the funders of this extraordinary project. Our job as board members is to increase resources for the university so that it can continue to offer transformative experiences for students and make a positive impact in the community. Exemplary programs like Florida Data Science for Social Good really get our attention. Um, our, our, every year we set aside uh, dollars so that we can fund some outstanding faculty initiatives. And then the grants committee spends months uh, in review and recommends several for two-year awards. The competition is stiff. We typically get two dozen or more excellent proposals and each one 
must shine at every stage of the process. And that process culminates in a full proposal and an in-person presentation. You will not be surprised to learn that Dan and Karthik crushed it. We have a list of criteria, not all of which uh, every proposal needs to meet, but their project touched every base. As, you've, as you know, it, 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 uh, it offers students uh, real world experience that expands their knowledge beyond the classroom and enhances their job prospects and develops their sense of social responsibility. It, it exemplifies, uh, as Dean Rainbolt said, it exemplifies collaboration across disciplines and colleges and with external partners. And its impact on the community is real and meaningful. So congratulations, Dan and Karthik and the students and everyone who's involved. I look forward to hearing about your summer's work. For us at the foundation, this grant is a home run. So thank you for making us proud. Thank you, Susan. Uh, next, I would like to call on Ari from Jacksonville Jaguars to share his thoughts. Yeah, thank you, everyone. This is this is really exciting to be reflecting as a funder this year. We've been involved now for four years, but this is the first year uh, that we've made a contribution to the program, and it's it's really meaningful because you know for the Jaguars to exist, it's all about the community, and we. We really want to support the community in any way that we can and nonprofits are, are such a big part of that and knowing what data has done for our organization and, and how it's affected it, you know, making that resource available to nonprofits that don't always have those options available to them is, is such a, an important thing to us. So be able to see, you know, the work that the, the students are able to do each year and, and what it does for the nonprofits that are a part of this program is uh, is incredible and the the return you know it pays dividends in terms of you know helping the nonprofits understand what they can do with their data and then in, in turn you know show that data to potential funders and and make it so they can gain more resources so um, it's it's really great to be part of this program and uh, congratulations to everybody who's participated thank you Ari uh, thank you Susan and thank you Ari for supporting our program and definitely that's one of the key for us to keep going uh, with this program. So with that, uh, now we are ready to segue to the main